Hi. In this video, we're going to continue our study on cognition, and we're going to take a look at problem solving and obstacles to effective problem solving. Remember, we're still in Unit 7B. We're looking at pages 300 to 304 here. Let's get started. Um, there's really two basic ways to solve problems. One of those ways is using algorithms. Algorithms are a methodical and logical rule using logical rules or procedures that guarantee we'll solve a particular problem. And that problem can be as simple as finding a pencil or choosing a college. Algorithms exhaust all possible solutions before arriving at a decision. So computers use algorithms. Humans rarely use algorithms because they're kind of tedious. Although they guarantee a solution, they tend to be fairly slow. Let's take a look at an example. Now you may have seen this in the textbook, but what if we were trying to unscramble this list of letters to find a target word? If we were to use an algorithm and unscramble all the possibilities that we could create words from this um, list of letters, it would be over 900,000 possibilities. Imagine how long that would take years of course. So instead of using algorithms, human beings tend to rely on another problem-solving technique, another type of cognition or thinking strategy called heuristics. Heuristics are, are simpler strategies than algorithms and they allow us to make judgments and solve problems quicker and more efficiently. However, they are a little bit more error-prone than algorithms are. So we make more mistakes but we use heuristics all day long, making decisions where to go, what to do, what to eat, should I study, should I ask a question. We tend to use heuristics a lot more than we use algorithms. Now if we were trying to find a particular type of mustard in a grocery store, how would we use an algorithm to find that mustard versus how would we use a heuristic to find that mustard? We'll talk about that when we see each other in class. Think about that though. What would a, an algorithm be, and what would a heuristic um, method of thinking be? Remember, heuristics make it easier for us to use um, principles that solve problems. Let's go back and look at our list of random letters. What if we tried putting a Y at the end of this word? Since Ys often result, or excuse me, Ys are often located at the end of words, Let's take a look at this list of letters then. and Maybe we could start to see uh, another heuristic, like put C and H together. Now that word's starting to make a little bit more sense. What if we did something like this, moved around some letters, and followed some heuristics until we got to the word psychology? How coincidental. Hmm. Now another way to solve problems is insight. Insight is a sudden realization of a solution to a problem you've been thinking about, sometimes for hours, minutes, or days even. How many of you have woken up in the middle of the night and you suddenly had the answer to a question that's been burning your brain for days? Like the name of a person, name of a band, a song, uh, another solution to a problem. Animals also seem to demonstrate insight. Let's take a look at a real short video clip of an animal as simple as a pigeon trying to solve a problem. I'll try and narrate a little bit for you here since there isn't any sound. Obviously pigeons don't think in words, but... So we go to YouTube here. Um, let's take a look. We've got our bird brain here. i got to reach that little plantain looks really good. God, if I only had wings, I'd fly up and... Wait a minute, I do have wings. But pigeons tend to not use their wings to obtain food. They use their wings to escape danger. Let's stretch again. I'm uh, tippy-toe. Got to use my beak to get food. It's just not working here. Dang it, that looks really good. Uh, what am I going to do? Hey, look at this. Hey, there's a different view. Let's try it one more time. What about, what about this box? I almost looked right at that thing when I was up on this box. 
What if I move it a little closer? And uh, too far away. Whoa, whoa, careful. Careful here. What if I do this? And insight, not knowing to knowing. Wow, even bird brains use it. Uh, other animals have been uh, demonstrated the ability to use insight. Um, primates have used this, very famous grand. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but primates using boxes, chimpanzees using boxes to obtain food that way too. So insight, uh, we've even imaged a brain and, and demonstrated on a PET scan where in the brain insight seems to occur. 2004, Jung and Beeman, basically they measured the time between not knowing a, prob a solution to a problem to knowing that solution. It's about a three-tenth of a second. Um, can you think of a time when you've had insight occur? I'd like to have a couple of examples when we get to class. And here's a, a diagram. Uh, we're looking at the right temporal lobe over here uh, above the ears. That seems to be where activity increased the most when we went from no knowledge to the solution to sudden synchronicity and knowledge. We're going to take a look at obstacles to problem solving. Now these are ways of thinking or cognitive ways of solving problems that get in our way. Sometimes they work because they're heuristics, but sometimes they don't. Confirmation bias, for example, is a tendency to look for information that confirms your beliefs, but it doesn't guarantee a solution to a problem. So if we were trying to figure out what's the numerical rule for this number pattern, 246, what do you think the rule would be? Basically, the rule is any ascending series of numbers. For example, 1, 2, 3 would also work. There was a subject when researchers were studying cognition, cognitive psychologists. One subject had difficulty figuring out the right rule because of confirmation bias. Basically, they said, well, 2, 4, 6, hmm, I wonder if 8, 10, 12, does 8, 10, 12 work? Yes, it does. Does 14, 16, 18 work? Yes, it does. The subject thought it was um, increasing num even numbers by two. And then they stopped looking for other solutions to the problem. But notice, if we go back up to the rule, one, two, three is not um, increasing by even numbers. So once we think we know, confirmation bias suggests that we, we close our mind to other, other possibilities. First impressions are that way when we have a first impression of somebody. We stop looking for information that would refute our beliefs or that would go against our beliefs. Fixation is another problem um, that occurs when we're trying to solve uh, a dilemma. Fixation is the inability to see a problem from a new perspective. This prevents us from solving problems when we we try to use a solution that worked before and it doesn't work, we can't think of other ways. Kind of two examples of fixations are mental set and functional fixedness. Fixedness. So if you've seen this already, you know the solution, so you already have um, a concept in mind, but how would you arrange six matchsticks to form four equilateral triangles? Interesting problem. Here's one you probably haven't seen. Assume that these lines are toothpicks and they're equal in size. How could you move two of those toothpicks and two only to create a diagram with four equal squares? Now all the toothpicks have to be used in the diagram and there can be no double sides. So how could we create four equal squares by moving two of these toothpicks? Let's try one more riddle. How about this one? A bear, a hunter sees a bear one mile due south with a very powerful rifle and a very powerful scope. He shoots and misses. The bear runs off. So the hunter walks one mile due south to where the bear actually had been standing, sees the footprints and everything. Then one mile due east. Then the hunter turns and walks one mile due north, at which point the hunter is standing in exactly the same spot 
from which he fired the gun in the first place at the bear and missed. The question is, what color is the bear? Yeah, yeah, what color is the bear? So mental set is a tendency to approach a problem in a particular way, especially if that way has been successful in the past. It's kind of like a cognitive predisposition. Your, your brain is set on a way to look at a problem before the problem even gets there. So past experiences can predetermine what we think and how we judge future circumstances. Functional fixedness is a tendency to think of only familiar functions for objects. So a screwdriver is only a screwdriver. We're going to look at this pro solution to this problem in class. So we're going to stop there. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to define each of the terms, algorithm, heuristic, insight, confirmation bias, fixation, and mental set, and how they all limit our ability to solve problems effectively. Now they can help us um, like algorithms and heuristics and insight, but they can also be obstacles and prevent us from being effective problem solvers, such as confirmation bias, fixation, and mental set. Now we can overcome those obstacles with smart thinking, which is why you're in psychology class. Thanks for watching. See you soon.